Packers trade results are huge. What am I talking about? I'm going to break that down for you guys here in a moment. First, I would love for you guys to leave your comments. Let me know who you think is going to finish last in the division. Now that we are five games into the season, we know how the division is starting to shake out. Minnesota looking to be the biggest surprise team in the NFL. The Chicago Bears finally getting their stuff together and figured out the sky's the limit in Green Bay with the talent that they have there. And then you've got the Detroit Lions. Same story there. Leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Who's going to end up finishing last in the NFC North, which is a very tough division. I still think it's going to be the Chicago Bears. Leave your comments. Let me know. So what do I mean by uh, the Packers trade results are huge? Well, it was just a couple of years ago that the Packers and the Jets were talking about a trade. And why were they talking about a trade? Well, the reason being is that there was so much drama surrounding Aaron Rodgers, Brian Gutekunst, Matt LaFleur. It was like, okay, something has to give. What do the Packers do? Um, and it says right here, Packers engaged to trade talks with the Jets in hopes that a deal happens that week. Well, you fast forward to that season. You have Aaron Rodgers. The hype is there. The Jets fans feel like they've got their savior in Aaron Rodgers, and he was going to take him to the promised land, which was the playoffs. And what happens a few plays in Aaron Rodgers has that Achilles injury. He goes down. And then all of a sudden you have the off field drama that was there. Of course, Jets fans are disappointed. Aaron Rodgers trying to comfort them being like, Hey, you know what? My Achilles, I've seen so many doctors and uh, I feel like I'm going to make a bounce back. And if, if the Jets happen to make the playoffs, I feel like I'm going to be ready, which would have been the first time in history that a player was ready off of such a serious injury like an Achilles injury. So again, playing with the emotions of the Jets fans, the Jets organization, and then you've got the upset fans leading into this year. So you bounce forward into this season and it's not going like the Jets fans or the organization thought Aaron Rodgers uncharacteristically has four interceptions so far this season, seven touchdowns, four interceptions, again, uncharacteristic. So the Jets are on a two-game skid. You have to put the blame somewhere because it's Aaron Rodgers. And so where do you look? Well, it says right here, ESPN's Adam Schefter explains Jets reasoning to fire for firing head coach Robert Sala. We all have heard and read that Robert Sala was let go from the Jets organization. Again, the reason why I bring this up, it was a similar situation that was happening in Green Bay. You had Aaron Rodgers, the drama that was surrounding. Is he going to be coming back? Is he not going to be coming back? Um, and then you had the Gouda Coons, Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers, something had to give. So the Packers trade him to the New York Jets, was, which was the absolute best thing that could have happened. What did the Packers get out of it? They got Lucas Van Ness, Lucas Van Ness proving to be an absolute stud and he's going to be a starter. It's just a matter of when the Packers just happened to be loaded with Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary, who both, by the way, are underperforming this year. So I'm waiting for the Packers D line to really prove themselves uh, going forward. Lucas Van Ness, of course, going to be a part of the Packers success defensively under Jeff Halfley in the near future. Lucas, Luke Musgrave. Okay. So Luke Musgrave is a great tight end. Um, however, he's been kind of injury prone. So nobody quite, quite knows what to expect from Luke Musgrave. The sky's the limit for this dude. The, the separation that this guy can have is absolutely um, game changing out there for the way um, Matt LaFleur calls a game. Luke Musgrave's talent is off the charts offensively. Now he's kind of a one dimensional tight end, but Tucker Craft kind of getting it done and kind of putting uh, Luke Musgrave in his shadow right now. But again, Luke Musgrave, big things are going to be coming from him uh, and probably with the Packers. Time we're going to time is going to tell. Edron Cooper, the Packers ended up drafting him this year with the second, you know, with the second round pick that they got from that Aaron Rodgers trade. Edron Cooper absolutely looks the part of a great linebacker. The Packers certainly hey, that's their best linebacker in Edron Cooper, even though he has such little playing time so far this season. But Edron Cooper going to be the Packers' best linebacker, already is the Packers' best linebacker. And of course, you know, Jordan Love, of course, got the opportunity with the trade of Aaron Rodgers. He got his opportunity to step up and showcase what he can do. He signed that big contract. 
we all know the talent is there with Jordan Love. Yes, he's off to a little bit of a slower start, and he had that injury with the MCL. Um, so he had that little setback. But Jordan Love is legit. He is for real, and he's going to be a great quarterback. So, again, this goes back to, um, and don't get me wrong, don't hear me wrong when I say this, Aaron Rodgers, I have so much respect for the dude and what he was able to do on the football field in Green Bay, get a Super Bowl, all of that stuff, bring so much winning culture to the Packers. However, near the end, the dude just created so much drama, and now the Jets are starting to feel that. They felt that as early la as last year, and the and, and the Jets have to turn somewhere to point the blame, and unfortunately, they do it to Robert Sala, who probably needed to go, but it's probably uh, a little bit premature, in my opinion. Again, they're on a two-game skid, and they have to put the blame somewhere, and of course, it can't be to put on Aaron Rodgers, but the Packers letting go of him at the perfect time because Matt LaFleur is one of the best coaches in the league and and the Packers again we're going to have to do something and Brian Gutekunst certainly you know had to get rid of him best thing that ever happened to the Packers at the time again same thing with Brett Favre the dude had a phenomenal career but his post NFL career has been tarnished because of all of the 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 stuff that's been there but great quarterbacks in green bay no disrespect to Aaron Rodgers i'm just grateful that he is gone because the Packers the trade results are huge for them and what the Packers were able to, one, get out of him. Plus, you know, they ended up saving, I think, a total of about $10 million when they bumped him, when they traded him. Of course, they took on that 40.3 in dead cap overall. But again, with what you're seeing, what's happening in New York, the Packers are certainly on the better side of that trade. Leave your comments about who's going to finish last in the NFC North. And as always, go Pack Go.